Yo, what's going on YouTube? Hey, welcome back to another video right here in On One. What we're gonna be looking at today is how you can use the new feature of organizing your photos in On One Photo Raw 2021. So let's just go ahead and dive right into the computer. Okay, so here we are inside of the computer in On One Photo Raw 2021. Uh, what I have in front of you right now is some random photos that I just took around the house one day. I was testing out my new EOS R6. Uh, this was you know a little while ago, uh, back in November, I guess not too long ago. Anyway, I have a bunch of random photos. Now, I have a series of raw photos as the CR3 files, and then I have a JPEG that corresponds with it. So. One of the original ways of organizing your photos is you would just come over here and you would click advanced search and you can create a criteria, right? So one of the things that I would make in this criteria would probably be file type. Uh, and this is so I can sort my JPEGs from my raw. So, and then I'll click on raw and you'll see these photos, they jump, they sort. And now you have all of your raw images, you know, in front of you, ready to go. And uh, obviously we were setting up for Christmas, had some Christmas decorations out. So I was taking pictures of those things, the blinds, just some random stuff, even pictures of my daughter. Uh, but maybe I wanted to see the JPEG, right? So now I have all the JPEGs of those exact images. And what I would typically do from here is a command A to select all of the images. Sorry, computer's lagging here. And then I would just come up here and I would create or copy uh, or right click and move these all into a subfolder, add subfolder. Uh, and this subfolder would be titled JPEG. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, right? I can spell JPEGs, move selected items into this folder. I don't want to copy because I don't want extra copies of images on my, uh, my hard drive. Now, if I turn advanced search off and I stay in the photo walk folder, I have all of my raw folder or raw folders, raw files out here in the folder. And then I have my JPEG folder. This is typically how I work. I shoot raw JPEG and I like to keep both of them together. Well, one of the cool things, and this is where I would normally stop. I would keep all of my raws uh, outside of the folder and put all my JPEGs inside of the folder. Uh, and then I would also probably build a deliverable folder in this if I wanted to actually export some stuff and give to clients or uh, print for myself, whatever. Well, one of the cool things is if you click on this little light bulb now that says Smart Organize, you get this pop-up window. And I took a lot of photos that are pretty similar, uh, but you get to choose if you want the duplicate photos, which I don't think I have any duplicates in this folder because I didn't save a lot of photos to one folder. Uh, and then you also get similar appearance which these are photos that look alike, maybe a little different, but they'll group them together. Uh, same time, self-explanatory, and same place requires a little bit of GPS uh, information. I don't really care about same time or same place in the regards of this particular photo set. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention is up here where it says, uh, search which photos, you can click the drop down and you can either select the current photos, which is what I want to work with, or you can select all catalog folders. And then the last option you have is you can select an actual folder. Uh, but I prefer to navigate to the folder to uh, look at it before I click the smart photo or a smart organize feature. Once I do that, we'll go ahead and click similar appearance and hit fine because that's what I want to do. And then you get another dialog box that pops up here and you get this welcome to smart organize uh, message, if you will. 
If you don't want to see it, just hit this checkbox, hit close, and then it'll go away. You'd never see that again. But what this is really talking about is uh, you can make decisions inside of Smart Organize to reject, delete, and uh, so forth and so on. This, I have to uh, warn you, if you have an edit-in approach to culling, this is definitely probably not going to be the best selection uh, tool for you because uh, it doesn't work the same way. This is more of a edit out approach. Um, and I'm okay with that, especially on my first pass when it comes to calling. So as you can see here, it created a few groups. I have group number one, two, three, so forth and so on. Looks like it only created six groups and you can see that up here and it only identified 16 similar photos. Now, I know for a fact that there's more than 16 photos in this folder, uh, and the way that you can go back and take a look at what the algorithm is doing behind the scenes is you click this advanced button. It'll give you a drop down, and you have some sliders here. I'm on level two, which it, it's looking pretty hard to, or it's looking medium hard. Right. Because the next level up is four. So we're about halfway there. You got three and then you got four um, and then obviously one and zero means it's not looking for any matches whatsoever. So we'll put it on one just so I can show you what happens here. And again, I'm not worried about time or GPS, but if your photo uh, catalog has some of that information that that is important to you, I would absolutely recommend that you take a look at that. But here we are inside of, uh, or we've gone ahead and hit the level one match and you see it's come up with nine different groups. Uh, and this is our TV remote. Uh, I took a picture of the door hinge for some reason. Um, and then this is a little candle holder on the table. As you can see, I got close here. I got further away here. Uh, and it's just grouping all of these. Now, what's cool is you can select these images, right? And I'm just gonna hold shift and we'll say, I like all of these images. Now, or I dislike, I'm sorry, I dislike these images. I, I don't necessarily, but whatever. You hit reject mark. You can, I'm not gonna insult your guys' intelligence, right? Uh, by hitting reject mark, it's going to get rid of the photo from that segment of your, uh, your search criteria. All right. But I am going to remove the selection from these because I don't want to reject these images. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you can look a little bit fine tuned. So we'll go ahead and hit number two, because I think it did a good job at finding the ones that are the most similar. Uh, and obviously, the higher up you put this particular number here, you're going to get more, uh, more similar results. Or as you're going to get pic pictures that are more identical. Sorry, can't speak today. Nonetheless, this is uh, one of those things that I think every, everyone who's using On One Photo Raw should probably be aware of so you can do your initial coal out. The way that you do that, I don't really care for this marshmallow shot. So I'm just going to go ahead and click reject mark and it's gone. It's also going to reject it from my folder. So when I go back to the folder, it's not going to be there. What's really cool about this is I can group, and I guess it doesn't work if you only have one image, uh, but what you can do is create a series of subfolders and or just get rid of all the photos that you don't like and be left with just the photos that you like, uh, and then maybe cull down a little bit further to choose the ones that you really want to edit, right? Um, and this helps with building variety in your overall portfolio or whatever you're going to be submitting to your client. You do have a few other options up here at the top. You can reject or delete. I always recommend you work with reject 
as opposed to delete because you don't want to get rid of images if you may want them in the future. Maybe you just don't want to look at them right now, so it's easier for you to choose what you're going to put in the catalog. I never recommend you delete images, especially if you're working on client stuff. Uh, and then the other thing, <clears throat> like On One always has this little gear, and there are some options. What this allows you to check or to do is auto select or auto mark images that meet the criteria that you set. I personally probably would not use this, just being honest. But based off of the file type, right? Uh, I, al I always separate my RAW and JPEG before I even come in here, so I'm not as concerned about that. Uh, however, it's edited, so maybe you have a folder where there's a bunch of edits and you don't even wanna look at fo photos that were edited already. Um, I would be careful, again, this is an opt out, uh, workflow. So if you auto mark the photos that are edited and then you reject them or delete them, they're, you know, that's self explanatory. I think you guys can see where that leads. Uh, so I have not found a reason to use this just yet, but you do have the option to select some of your auto mark uh, settings. And then whenever you run the uh, criteria for a smart organize, it will automatically mark your images for you. So that could be helpful in some situations. Uh, now you get some file info here. Uh, we'll, we'll come back over to the search options. So you'll get some file info. Like I said, I took this with my EOS R6 uh, with my 35 millimeter lens uh, for the RF and then the date, you get the megapixel count and you get the dimensions and this is telling me that it's an original photo this was not a copy or a dng or anything that was made uh, whatever um, and then you can also get your settings that develop or built your exposure this could be helpful if you're trying to figure out if you like the darker image uh, or you want something with more iso grain or maybe you like the depth of field, whatever it may be, this could be helpful uh, if you're really trying to figure out which one do I want to keep, which one do I want to get rid of, all right? And then you have settings applied. Uh, this is what would have been applied during the actual uh, import. As you can see, I haven't done anything with the, these particular photos, so there's no settings applied. Now, Smart Organize. What I want to do is really clarify that Smart Organize is a tool in order to get you going. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all for culling. It will help you select some images that are uh, bad, not good. It'll keep the good images. The other thing is it only works with similar images, all right? So if you have a series of unique images uh, smart organize for the uh, select similar images, that's not going to work. Maybe you will want to identify same time or maybe GPS location because you just have too much of a variance. Um, or you're going to need to use the auto search feature that's already been in on one. Uh, but overall, smart organize really does help especially if you're using a seri a folder for all of your images and then you want to throw in some duplicate or you know you may have some duplicate images in there uh, and that's going to look at file name and you know you're, you're going to be able to really dive a little bit deeper to figure out which images are duplicates or not so hopefully you guys found this video helpful and if you did go ahead and smash the like button and if you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button. Uh, here at Freewell Photos, we help new photographers learn how to use the photo editing software so you can go a little bit further and demystify the way that uh, the industry really wants you to be able to edit your photo. Uh, my goal is to help you with your creative journey. Uh, as many people on this platform of YouTube and across the globe and in person have helped me. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.